Hi, I'm Sam Weaving, and I play Azriel. Hi, I'm Neil Katz, and I directed Azriel. I'm Simon Barrett, writer and producer of Azriel. Azriel is a horror film. <laughs> Azriel is a post-apocalyptic horror film about a young woman escaping her religious sect, uh, and it doesn't go well for various reasons. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you. Honestly, this is one of the few things I've ever written that came from a dream. I don't tend to find a lot of inspiration in my work from my subconscious because it's mostly just garbage. <laughs> but I had a, I actually had a recurring nightmare that was really very literally kind of like the first half of the film. Uh, and I wrote it down and then eventually it was kind of like, well, it feels like this is a story that wants to be told, even though I don't understand certain parts of it. Uh, and, and that was the creative genesis. And then I kind of fleshed it out into a screenplay that had no dialogue and went from there. I've known Simon 20 years. Um, it feels like right, right now it's been 20 years. And, you know, we've worked together in various capacities on a million other projects. Like, you know, I kind of helped them out a little bit on Harbor Way to Die. Um, we tried to do a VHS uh, thing together at one point. We've co-written feels like two or a three unproduced scripts scripts so you know there there's a lot of history i think like you know working together on a movie it, there was definitely some new things that we had to learn together but you know the thing is this is like we both really really wanted to push and make a really uncompromising you know artistic insane genre movie and on that end we were just completely aligned all the time so i think when it came to set pieces it was always like okay how do we make this as big but still approachable to pull off? How do we make the gore as you know detailed as possible? You know, and Simon was there in Estonia, like we he was shooting a shitload of second unit, like we were in the you know in the weeds together like the entire time. So it was a really strong, uh, it was a big job, and yeah, Simon was there with me the whole for the whole thing. So I play Azrael. Um, what was Incredible about Simon's script is that it was such, she's such a force of nature, you know, um, and she, I had to, the challenge was that I had to carry this whole movie without using my voice, which at first was really terrifying. Um, but that was quite good. I like when I get scared, it means I kind of, I really care about it and I loved it. Um, um, and she um, was so, her arc is so beautiful because there's an innocence to her, but by the end, she's just a complete badass um, and made, and kind of demented. <laughs> so <laughs> that was really fun to map out. And I, uh, like you guys were saying, they were such a great team. So it made my job really easy because I think everyone was on the same page with the theology and the sort of um, myth Mytho mythology yeah. yeah there we go the mythology about it so um yeah I just had to show up and play which is great yeah I mean I think at an early stage Evan asked me to kind of put together like a uh, an internal document that would sort of explain a little bit of the history and I kind of just made something up that I wasn't even sure was right <laughs> but it was like it was kind of the bible that we used like behind the scenes to make sure that we were in agreement um because we knew we wanted the film to leave some things ambiguous uh, so, and when you're, when you're making a film that has any ambiguity or mystery to it, you have to be really careful that like all the clues are there and you're not just giving people like, like nothing, you know? <laughs> well, cause, cause people pretend Give that it's, nothing. well, people pretend that it's like harder to make an ambiguous movie, but it's actually harder to have a beginning, middle and an end. A ambiguity is easier. Uh, it, it's a lot easier, but, but we wanted, we didn't want to cheat. We didn't want it to feel like, oh, this is just nonsense. We wanted it to be very clear that like everything made sense. We just weren't like spelling it out to you. Mm. Um, and that was really kind of, and then from there on, it was just, uh, you know, hoping that everyone was on the same page. I mean, yeah, I, I think one thing that we learned, you know, cause we went down a few different rabbit holes of like all sorts of specificity with like, well, is there all these gestures? Is it this thing? Is it this thing? And I think one thing that we worked together on was, well, there's very clear emotional beats in these scenes that, they're the most important thing. And if we got too caught up with all sorts of a variety of other kind of strange communications, it might overwhelm the actual emotional core that Azriel's going through. So I think it did feel like it came down to her subjective and emotional experience. 
and then if it got too busy on top of that, it would be distracting. Right. The, yeah, I mean, Asriel takes place in a culture, essentially, that's banned language. So we couldn't replace speech with something else, like mm -hmm. signs or clicks or whistles, because it would just be a different form of language. Mm -hmm. We had to leave Samara with absolutely no tools mm -hmm. to, to convey her character and her character's journey to the audience. But that really was the fun of it. But we, we would go too far with some of that. We would talk like, oh, they, they would use gestures and stuff. But then it's just a different language. Then you're mm -hmm. starting to like basically create a sign language, and that's, that's a language just like English. And so we, uh, we kind of, it, it, it was a, you know, it's a balancing act. You'll see in the film that people do have certain nonverbal cues, but we tried to keep that fairly limited to what felt just like natural bare minimum. It's, it's very hard to define when a gesture becomes language or something, uh, but you know, that's what the edit room is for. Cool. And I think a lot of it was on the actors on the day because you have to try these things and see how they feel. And I, and I think they felt them their way through these scenes where there wasn't always a roadmap in terms of like what gesture would work and what, you know, it, it had to be put on its feet. Yeah, well, I think if you remove language, you can still have, you can still communicate with emotions. And I think that's what was so interesting and um, great about this. It was really freeing, you know. But listen, the <laughs> script was incredible and I just, um, you know, went off of that. Uh, she, it was a lot of like, um, if that, then what? So like, if it's post-apocalyptic, what does, how does someone learn how to interact with someone and what do relationships even look like? Um, and I love that I could create my own backstory because it doesn't matter because the audience is going to make up their own minds. But I wanted to make sure that I made deliberate choices based on a backstory that I had. I didn't want my re my performance to be ambiguous. I wanted the reaction of the audience to be ambiguous and like help them come to their own conclusions. And that was really fun and creative and actually, uh, you know, dialogue can sometimes limit that. So that was really fantastic. And I just made sure that I would make, uh, you know, definitive decisions and then Evan would be like I understood that or I did not understand that make a different one um so it was great it was a real team team effort and like shout out to Stanny who was the Big incredible time. stunt director because a lot of it was you know um carried in the choreography of those stunts and a lot of the emotion was within those fight sequences um which was really interesting to explore I hadn't really done that before like how do you tell a story with fighting <laughs> we did it um so that was incredible i could lean on a lot of other tools i know <laughs> Simon was like we tied our hands together but it actually really freed me up in a lot of other ways which was great